this uh, July 12 meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission is called to order. Uh, first thing we have to do is approve the agenda. Do we have a motion for that? I move approval of the agenda. Okay. Second. Okay. So motion by Ariane, second by Stephanie. Those in favor of approving the agenda say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, agenda approved. Uh, next thing is comments from the chair. Um, just briefly, I'd like to just pause for a second because we've done a lot of work lately and I just want to say uh, that uh, a lot of work can be can feel thankless at times like this. So I wanna just thank everyone for the work that you're putting in. Uh, obviously the biggest thanks uh, should go to Mike from all of us. Um, it's easy to take for granted that he's doing all this behind the scenes work that makes everything possible. And he also gets to sit through all these meetings where we're like dissecting like his first draft of things. And just want to say that we appreciate all the thought that goes into that. Um, you know, I did a lot of editing on transportation today and I could see like how thoughtful that chapter was put together and that goes for all the chapters. So just thanks to everyone. Thanks to Mike. Thanks for the support staff. and. Thanks to Orca. Talk about thankless. Uh, okay, that's all I've got though. Uh, so the next thing on the agenda is general business. We don't have any members of the public, so uh, no need for that. And uh, we have to consider the minutes from the June 14 and the June 28 meetings. So if everyone could look at the June 14 meeting minutes. First. Uh, if no one has objections to me taking this approach, I will move approval of both of the minutes that we're reviewing today, the June 14th and June 28th. And then everyone's had a chance to look at them. Yeah, I'll second that if you need a second. <laughs> okay. We have a second from Marcella. Uh, does anyone need a minute to keep reviewing both sets of minutes? Except it was Ariana who seconded it. <laughs> what did I say, Ariana? No, you said Marcella, but that's okay. Oh, I did? Oh, okay. okay. We'll just set the record straight. It's fine. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I may as well admit now that I never know how to say Ariane's name correctly, and I'm always <laughs> self-conscious every time I say it. It is, so, it's actually Ariane. So it's a see, that's why. That's why. Like I I know it's something different than what my head thinks. And that's why I'm constantly so Ariane. Yeah, yeah. Just think R. Letter R. Right, but just to be yeah. clear, that the the alternate pr pronunciation is not Marcella. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, if you're actually. if you're you know, you gotta go big if you're gonna be wrong, you know. <laughs> Uh, so Ariane seconded uh, Stephanie's motion. Those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Minutes approved. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do before we jump into transportation is that Aaron and the other folks from the working group for natural resources chapter wanted to go over the aspirations and goals for that chapter. And otherwise, um, I'm not fully caught up on what you guys have been up to, but uh, if anyone wants to take it away and, and walk through that, go ahead. And if you want to share the screen, you're welcome to, or I can pull it up one or the other. Okay. Um, does anybody- I have do, it here. Do, do, do any of, who's going to- It's like it was a while ago when we talked about it. So who's gonna speak, it who's, who wants to speak to this? Looks like me. 
Okay. Do you want me to pull it up? Do you have it up? Uh, yeah, give me a second. Um, hold on, how do I? And I think it's Marcella, you updated the Excel file, right? You should look at that one. Yeah, the Excel, the template. Uh, I was looking at the Word document that we had. We can do, which one do you want to do? The, the Excel document or the Word document? Uh, we don't want to get into strategies today, right? I think let's start, yeah, let's start higher with the Excel file, yep. with the aspiration. No. Then I think, I think we can use the spreadsheet, then it's just the goals and the aspirations. It doesn't have strategies in it yet. And I think this was me in blue writing in here, but I'm not positive. <laughs> I think it was. Yeah, okay. So hopefully the two reflect each other, they should. Right. Um, yeah, not seeing you on the share screen yet though. Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry, my computer is geeking out right now. Marcella, do you have it up? I do, do you want me to, you, I can try. Yeah, we can just. Um, Mike, can you give me permission to share? Oh, no, I have it. Just, yeah, because I don't think you need permission. I don't know why I couldn't see the green button in front of my face. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, okay, so... Okay. Here's, uh, so, okay, Aaron, do you, you can talk if you want, but A, B, and C were the first, were the natural resources, the proposed, was it the, which committee is it? The Conservation Commission? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it was, it's been about a month. So we we're admittedly all a little rusty <laughs> looking back at this document, but we, but the, the Natural Resources Working Group met, yeah, about a month ago, um, and we wanted to make some sort of broad brushstroke structural changes to the way that um, this chapter was going to be organized, just because we thought that it was going to create a more efficient and, and create some more clarity for the chapter. Um, and so we made some changes where we condensed, there was three aspirations that existed out of the gate. You can see those on the, on the spreadsheet. We are recommending that that be uh, replaced with the following aspiration, which is Montpelier maintains a resilient and healthy environment through stewardship and protection of our natural heritage and resources. And then um, basically we would, and the remaining, um, goals um, would, some of those goals would be removed. Um, but I think the important piece that we wanted to outline is, is that all of the strategies that are contained in the current uh, sort of outline would remain intact. And so this was just sort of a way to streamline uh, the aspirations and goals uh, to sort of just create a, a better flow and some and sort of a better focus because there was just oh, there was just some redundancies that we felt like that existed in the goals and aspirations level of this chapter. Um, but I think again, what I just want to stress is is we we haven't made any proposal to make any changes to the underlying strategies. We think that the strategies that are laid out uh, by the conservation committee are all very good, um, and we just we were just wanted to sort of lay out these changes, these proposed changes to the group um, to sort of get feedback so that we can move into putting pen to paper and actually drafting the actual um, chapter and also let Mike condense the strategies uh, as he normally does with these chapters. So um, there is also a Word document that exists in the natural resources uh, folder with proposed edits to the Word document so it's the same information, it's laid out in a different way. Again, I just want to stress that there's just a removal of uh, 
basically all three aspirations are condensed down into one. There is some uh, removal of some of, uh, of, of the goals, uh, of certain goals, um, and we just sort of shifted some of the strategies around, but they are all remain intact. So if you have specific questions about you know, why we chose to do this, happy to answer them. But again, I think we just wanted to stress that this was just, we thought that having a single aspiration with some more, um, with a smaller number of, of goals, which is gonna make it for a, a more efficient and eminently more re readable uh, chapter. Um, but again, all the strategies remain intact. Uh, that's uh, and that's just that we, we just wanted to give we just wanted to give the group the opportunity to take a look at it and provide any feedback before we handed it off to Mike basically. And uh, the next steps would be like the strat like comparing any strategies together as we have done any others and do we need, do we decide we want to like, oh, I guess I'll leave it to Kirby. I don't know what we want to do with, if we need to do anything to like move this forward today. But um, I think when we did it, we had just talked about, like we were working on the energy chapter and the housing chapter and it was, we were talking about this type of approach. And so we tried to use that um, for this. I, I think it looks like it's in line with what we've been doing so far. So um, I don't have any major uh, feedback. I think it seems fine to hand off to Mike and then when we're ready for that chapter, work on it fully then. Um, the only other person here that's not on the working group is Ariane. Do, do you have any comments? No, it looks, it looks fine to me. Yeah, okay, so looks good. Thanks for checking in. Um, so feel free to, yeah, move forward with your next steps. You're, you're not planning on working on strategies, right? I mean, I know the I working group's been on have done that. I was just gonna ask that. So is that the, now we hand it back to Mike and say, we're happy with the aspirations and goals and now you can condense a little, Mike? Is that your preferred? Yeah, that's, that's what my plan would be, would be to, to collapse these down and then we can review the collapsed strategies. Okay, so if and you're looking in the Word document, that, that'll show you how we shifted things if we deleted the goal. Um, oh, that okay. something fell under. So you'll be able to see where we moved, if we moved some of the strategies under a different goal because we deleted their goal. Oh, okay. I see now some of the ones that are in red are not new ones, they were just moved. They're not new, the yeah. Spot. Exactly. So we didn't actually edit anything at the strategy level other than to move it under different goals. Do we do we have a chapter drafted for this chapter? No. I no. No. Don't think I've started the uh, yeah, there isn't I don't think anything. I've the chapter. Yeah. Or, the... Yeah, I've got some of them that I work on on my computer before I drop them onto the working drive. I don't think I've got this one ready to go. Okay. So sounds like we'll we'll be doing this one later. Okay. Yeah, but we just we just wanted to get this moving to get over to Mike so that we can get kind of paper on it and get it moved forward. So, so do we do we want to just wait to vote on the whole implementation strategy once the the other part is done? The once we approve the strategies, then we'll approve the whole thing. Sounds good. That's fine. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking this was like to vote on right now. It's just a, okay. a check-in thing. Right. Yeah, but we had we had a really good conversation when we went through it, and I think we all felt really good about what they were proposing. And so it wasn't it it ended up being a, a much less complex chapter than some of the ones that we've dealt with. I think like transportation or energy, uh, from the term from the standpoint of the strategies, actions, etc. All right, and I do have a draft. Um, chapter that's on my computer. It just isn't on the drive yet. I finished it, looks like on Friday. If you wanna put, or if we're ready to put it in the drive, I'm happy to look at it 
with an eye for editing before our next meeting? Or before we- Yeah, we could, we could have a quick, uh, yeah, Mike, if you wanna put that up and the working group can take a look at it and <laughs> right. some suggestions before the next meeting and hopefully we can just get this thing moving quickly. What uh, what um, part of the plan were you thinking of doing next, Mike? After transportation, uh, I had a couple of them. I had been working on. I've been trying to get as far ahead of these as I can. I think I have. I think housing. I have a chapter ready to go as well. Um, yeah, I've got housing, natural resources, and we're working on transportation. So those are the three that I have ready right now. And I'm working on utilities and facilities. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to... to economic development. We've got a strategy, but I don't have a chapter written for economic development. So that's another one that's still and that pending. Our, work, <clears throat> our working group hasn't actually met on it. We kind of dropped the ball on that one. Um, duh, duh, duh. The, the housing group had some proposals, but I'm not seeing it <clears throat> on the drive right now. <clears throat> The reason why I'm checking is that it might have actually been talking about moving something over to transportation. I'll have to look at that later. Ariane, do you remember what, what we had talked about moving within the housing chapter? Uh, sorry, I don't remember. Um... But you're saying what we had come up with in the structure and the housing chapter is not in the Google Drive? I'm not seeing it right now. There's only two things in there and they're, um, it may have been one of the things we edited, but I'm, I'm not seeing what I'm looking for. Hmm. Anyways, have to, uh, yeah, yeah, well, actually I did find it. It says should be in the transportation chapter and then the parts about neighborhoods will allow residents to live, work and shop and play without a car. Oh, okay. That part I think is transportation, yeah. So yeah, there are when, we, when we look at transportation, I think we'll have to, we should take into account that that was, whether it's, a, whether some of these um, goals should be in transportation or in housing. Okay. Uh, so do we have anything more on natural resources or should we move on to transportation? Okay, seems like we're good. Uh, well, thanks for the update guys. Thanks for the work on that. Uh, so with that, um, we have the review and comments for the aspirations and goals for transportation first. Uh, so if everyone can pull that up. Uh, I did work on the chapter today for transportation, uh, but the uh, aspirations and goals, I did not really touch because um, it's, there's not very much there. Uh, so I, f I just thought we could go through it as a group. Um, Somebody want to share that or you want me to share that? Yeah, which document are you looking at? The, 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 spread, the spreadsheet one is, is what we're going to start with. And okay. yeah, feel free to share it, Mike.
All right, so hopefully you can all see that. Oh. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little too big. All right, so the over. So the original three that kind of came out of aspirations that came out of the transportation committee um, that I think um, you'll all kind of remember there was, uh, it's easy to live and work um, without owning a car. Uh, all of Montpelier's transportation modes are safe, efficient, attractive, balance quality with cost effectiveness and meet the needs of all users and Montpelier's transportation system will be environmentally responsible and sustainable. So really they're kind of three big groups. Um, and so I came up with a couple of suggestions, which I put down here. Um, which actually looks like the, the second sentence was already removed above. In Montpelier, it's easy to live and work uh, without owning a car. And I think I don't have the original in front of me, but I think it actually had more. Actually, it looks like some there was some editing already. So yeah, I did I did go in and edit this based on okay. what um, we've done. And I I'm sorry if I was supposed to leave. <laughs> The original in there, I, I didn't do that, and I maybe I was supposed to, and I, I don't know. But that's one reason why I didn't touch it because I'm not sure that in this format you can track the changes. Yeah, you can't track changes in the, in this one, which makes it trickier to work with. Which is why I sometimes would either put them on below or put them on a side column just to go through and and say. So I think there may have been more, but basically, and it looks like the the first one was already gone through remove the second sentence. Uh, these are all covered in the goal. I think there was a longer sentence to that and maybe somebody has that in front of them. I don't have a printout right with me. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I, I think I did leave some of the goals in the when I was editing in the next tab, but I think the aspirations were pretty I think we just shortened A, B, and C, and then removed the, um, uh, or combined the uh, D one about design to create informal spaces to foster. Yeah, yeah. That, that was my suggestion was to was to remove that. It kind of seemed more like a land use um, aspiration than it was a transportation. That's not to say it's, it's not important to transportation, but I think as we're doing what we've been doing, I think what we have in D is probably just going to get replaced in and get relocated in, into land use. Um, so yeah, I think, I think what's, what is above in A, B, and C are actually the condensed versions of a little bit of what I had suggested with the work of the transportation committee was to go through and say, we, we, we can say what we need to say for our aspirations in, in three pieces. And I don't know if we wanna jump over to the goals and then kind of come back and look at them in, in context. Yeah, I think that will help. Um, I mean, the aspirations seem fine, but because there's a lot to transportation and, and just for everybody's benefit and the public's benefit, you know, transportation is everything from, you know, walking, biking, cars, uh, the railroad, um, airports, um, public transportation. So there's a lot that goes into it, um, you know, wanting to encourage how, how we try to improve safety and efficiency and quality. So there's a lot that we already do and a lot that we could do. Um, so I think, 
Let me just take a quick look down. I want to say there were originally, yeah, there looks like there were originally 14 or so um, pieces that were in there. And it looks like, again, I'm trying to do this a little bit. If I sneak over a little bit, I'll see some of my comments. Um, which kind of included a, a chunk of these. The, so the first one implementation would have been removed two to five are all distinct. And I may have to go and just go and grab some of my paper copies so I can see what was there. But I know my suggestions were to kind of combine a number of these, understanding that we have a lot of goals, but at the same time, there's a lot that transportation is and does. So uh, it looks like the transportation committee can bind this down to one, two, three, four, maybe four, looks like they got it down to four different, five. Yeah, I think we got five there. And I just, uh, yeah, I left the numbers and I think I put them, oh, I can't scroll on this. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I put them, yeah, down below, sort of under the, I just kind of chunked them down there. Ah, ah, these were the ones that were either removed or combined. Yeah. So uh, it looks like it let me get in between the two. Um, so it looks like the goal is balance quality and cost effectiveness to improve accommodations and safety for pedestrians and bicycles on all streets and pathways, increase public transit and shared mobility opportunities, and access through an integrated multimodal transportation system, improve efficiency of Montpelier's transportation system through the efficient movement of people and goods, improve the appearance of Montpelier's transportation infrastructure and amenities, especially from the perspective of walkers and bikers, and improve the transportation infrastructure to better treat stormwater generation, decrease greenhouse gas emissions, mitigate heat island effect, and increase opportunities for informal public spaces. So uh, yes, we can we can go through these uh, the, through the goals one by one. I think like and then relating them back to the aspiration. Uh, I guess one thing I have on the the first aspiration, which is uh, about living without a car, right? Um, in Montpelier, it is easy to live and work without owning a car, and so our two goals are right now what we have here are balance quality and cost effectiveness to improve accommodations and safety for pedestrians and bicycles on all streets and pathways and increase public transit and shared mobility opportunities and access through an integrated multimodal transportation system. The first question I have is I, I just threw at the, at the bottom to the right there, the two housing goals that the working group wanted to move over to this chapter and they both fall under aspiration A. Um, so I guess my question is, uh, do we want to include these or do we think that they're already included? They are the goal of improve access to downtown from our neighborhoods by foot, bike, or public transit. So they kind of fall under the two goals we have now, but not exactly that one. And the other one is to improve neighborhood accessibility, uh, which is slightly different than accessibility to downtown, right? Um, can you explain more about how you think those two are different? Because I'm not, I'm not sure I'm understanding. Yeah, so the first one goes to being able to 
access downtown from everywhere uh, through different modes of transportation. Uh, and I'm reading into that a bit that we're, you know, not making any mode of transportation dominant, that it should be equally attractive to go by foot as by car to, to access downtown from anywhere. So that's kind of what the first one I think is getting at. The second one, improved neighborhood accessibility is to get to neighborhoods. So it's not, so I'm looking at that a little bit broader than just going from neighborhood to downtown. I'm looking at that as um, traveling within your every neighborhood should be easy and accessible. I really, I, I would see that as one thing um, and not say that we need to make it two goals. It's really, it's about access for everyone to all places, right? Yeah, I kind of tend, I kind of agree with Stephanie. I think yeah, if you I mean, do, I didn't invent it, so. Yeah, or we just take the broader one, you know, improved neighborhood accessibility or improved neighborhood in accessibility, including the downtown neighborhood. One can kind of eclipse the other. Yeah, so do we, do you, do we think we need a, like, even if we use one, just, just combine those or figure out one goal based on that, um, is it, is it additional and different enough from the other two goals that are here, which the first one is balance quality and cost effectiveness to improve accommodations and safe books. So that one goes more to safety, right? Not accessibility. And then the second one is to in increase public transit and shared mobility. So that one goes more to car alternatives than about accessibility. I so actually it, wonder, uh, oh, sorry, Kirby. No, go ahead, Stephanie. I'm just, I'm just thinking a lot, so go ahead. Yeah, I, I wonder if that access piece isn't really better addressed under aspiration B, that our transportation modes are safe, efficient, and meeting the needs of all users. To me, that, that would really be the one that covers ability of everyone to access in whatever fashion they're accessing or needing to. Okay. Yeah, I, my mind went to A because it was from the housing uh, chapter and I feel like, I don't know, I, I thought A related to housing, but. Uh, I guess I'm also, I guess sort of part of how I'm, <laughs> this challenge that's happening in my head is that I think A and B could probably be a combined aspiration. I don't think that those are necessarily distinct things that it's easy to live and work without a car or that we're for making sure that we have all of these quality other non-car systems in place. Those to me are really pretty connected. Yeah, when I was going through the chapter, I would I rephrase some things because I, I feel like it's what we're getting at, but it doesn't expressly say is, I feel like what we really want is for all modes of transportation to be treated evenly and not have a car centric and car dominated place. Um, right, and I, yeah, to me, the second aspiration I think would, would get us there, that all of our modes are, there, we're balancing cost effectiveness, we're meeting the needs of all of our users but through multiple routes of transportation. But I, I get that the specifically wanting to not need a car piece is really important to the committee. But to me, I think I don't, I wouldn't see that that needed to be its own aspirations. I, I like, I like that being co like consciously saying that we're not going to have cars drive transportation, no pun intended. Um, I, I do think that it's in, important to to be upfront about that if we can. And what, is, what does everyone else think about combining a, aspirations A and B, which I think is what Steffi's getting at? I'm not, I'm not attached. I'm just trying to figure out whenever I'm looking at these, I'm always trying to figure out how we can streamline it and keep it as efficient as possible in, in our language. So 
I won't be heartbroken yeah. if you disagree with me. <laughs> no, I think combining those two creates that efficiency, and I, I, I support it. Yeah, I think so. I think in theory, the way this was broken out was that aspiration A was really looking at the system, while aspiration B was kind of starting to look at the pieces and parts. So one was trying to, you know, um, look at things in a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger scale. Um, you know, how do we make a system that's integrated? How do we have, how do we have complete streets? Um, kind of looking at the big picture while the other ones is kind of getting into how do we make things safe and efficient and attractive, which is really kind of getting down to more the on the ground scale, um, which is usually how those are addressed. Which is not to say it's right or wrong, I'm just saying that's that's how the, the breakout came came to be. I, I, I'm all for efficiency. I do kind of think that it's good to put a point on the live and work without a car value because I think that was important to the committee so but we could do that in the chapter rather than an aspiration I guess yeah, the, the chapter does say that a couple at least a couple times um I, you know, I agree with Marcella that it's it's nice to, to pull it out, but I'd be fine with combining them too. Yeah, I think as long as it's very clear by what we mean of all Montpelier's transport, because I'm I guess I'm not necessarily of the opinion that we're treating all modes of transportation equally. I think this plan elevates everything but cars because cars are already elevated, if that makes sense. So I guess I would want to, to just make sure that in the chapter we're real clear about what we are talking about by all modes of transportation are safe, efficient, et cetera, if we dump um, aspiration A, which is, which is fine. And I think we can do. So oh, I, don't, I don't wanna push too far here, but I would also, now that I'm looking at these three again, if we put the words environmentally responsible or sustainable in aspiration B, I don't even, I would very happily just see one aspiration. And that's me and that's how I think, but I, I don't see the need to, to pull any of these out from, from each other. What is the, what's the one thing that we're really trying to do? Um, how do we say it in an efficient one sentence possible? But, but again, don't <laughs> fight me on it if you want. It's fine, I'm not attached. I think that's fine. And actually, I think by by further combining them, I think it makes me less worried that we're going to inadvertently appear to be car centric. Yeah, I agree. And and I think the living without a car piece will shine through in the in the goals and in the strategies. But really, if we are meeting the needs of all of our users, it is possible to live and work without a car. Okay, I'll stop now. That's me. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'll give it a shot. I'll say for the transportation committee, that was their foundational building block. Was you know that was their vision. If you if you go back to the to the basically the aspiration for the transportation system, that is for them. That was what they built their this working document around. So I I think if 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 we get comments back from them, they'll be probably disappointed to see that line was removed but i think, I think though that, if we're, if we're very good with our goals we can go ahead aaron sorry so i was just gonna say you're when you say that was their foundational block it's the living without a car yeah in montpelier it's easy to live and work without owning a car yeah i was thinking that that was pretty foundational to them too and i i think it but i think if we if we put it in the I chapter, think, I don't think that gets lost. I mean, it's yeah. not as explicit. So I, I, I just took a shot at combining them all. So if you look at B now, which would be A, B, and C combined, all of my, 
I, I moved meet the needs of all users up to put more emphasis on that because of the car thing. Um, all of Montpelier's transformation modes meet the needs of all users by being safe, efficient, attractive, balanced quality with cost effectiveness, environmentally responsible, sustainable, and meet the needs of, and I need to change that, of course. Uh, that is a serious sentence. It is. I, when I started reading it, I realized that. I might just, that, that balance one, I mean, what if we just said quality and cost effective? I mean, I think it's implied that all these things are being balanced. So all of Montpelier's transportation modes meet the needs of all users by being safe, efficient, attractive, quality, cost-effective, environmentally responsible, and sustainable. You might say all of my players high quality transportation modes meet the needs of users by being safe, efficient, cost-effective, environmentally responsible, and sustainable. But then we will have low quality transportation that will not meet the needs of people. And it begs the question of like, yeah, what does, which ones are quality? It's, um, a, it's it's built into the sentence. All of my players' transportation modes are high quality by being high quality transportation modes, because they all are high quality transportation. Oh, I see. I see. Can we? Do we lose? I'm trying to remember from the original. Did we lose something about accessibility? And also. In B, if we go with that, can we not use by being? Can we just say modes meet the needs of all users, comma, are safe, efficient? Um, and then does, does anyone remember if there was something about accessibility? I feel like. I also, I, I'm trying to think of. Sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, I so I think that's a good piece to add. I'm trying to think of if these specific words that we're listing out are really the right ones. Um, and also, I kind of just wanted to say, I don't want, I don't know. I guess we want all of the modes of transportation to be meeting all of those things. But it might be more efficient to just say, Montpelier's transportation system is safe, efficient, attractive, and accessible. Exactive, in, accessible and environmentally responsible. I don't think we need all of those words. <laughs> I mean, we don't we can, need it. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I think it's it's a simpler sentence to say Montpelier's transportation system meets the needs of all users. If that's still getting at what we're yes. striving for. Because we don't need every mode to meet. Well, we do need, we want every mode to meet whatever their users' needs are. But then the, if the whole system is meeting everyone's needs, that's what we're looking for. Montpelier's transportation system meets the needs of all users through safety, efficiency, attractiveness, quality, cost effectiveness, environmental responsibility, and sustainability. I didn't change those last two. But... Do we do we like this sentence better? Or it still needs to be improved? I think it's okay. <laughs> a thrilling endorsement. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like we're this, getting closer. <laughs> yeah, when we when we list well, out you... adjectives, I feel like there's always probably something we've forgotten, but I wonder if safety, efficiency, quality kind of gets at. Um, as long as we have goals and strategies that meet each of those adjectives, I mean, that that's fine, I guess. I do think one downside of us condensing things the way we are is we are we are creating these monster aspirations. Mm. Well, I think when we get to the end of the plan, how many aspirations do we think we're gonna have? And to me, these are 
sort of like vision statements within each. And if there's a way to succinctly say it, like when Marcella and Aaron and I were talking about the natural resources section, it just sort of, we had some wordsmithing and then it fell together and we were like, yes, that's it. That covers all of it. And it was this beautiful moment where we figured it out. And I, this sentence isn't there yet, but I think it could be. <laughs> I think we could, I think we could make it a sentence that covers all of that, that feels like it's the right fit. Yeah. Okay. Um, unless we unless we have some further ideas, we could go back to goals now, and with a better idea of what aspiration we're linking to. Um, if we do do the combined aspiration, we don't have to worry so much about uh, the accessibility goal falling into either A or B because now it'll fall into the to the one monolithic aspiration. Mm -hmm. Uh, so okay let's go back uh so we have we have goal one and goal two that we've talked about so far um i'm gonna include uh the other thing we were talking about Jump back real quick here. Improve accessibility to Okay, uh, so we have, I just, I just uh, created one that said improve, uh, improve accessibility to downtown and within neighborhoods through all modes of transportation. That was just my rough first shot at that. I'm seeing here that we also have <clears throat> as goals, improve the efficiency of Montpelier's transportation system through the efficient movement of people and goods. I guess that's a little similar, but different improve the appearance of Montpelier transportation infrastructure and amenities, especially from the perspective of walkers and bikers. One overarching question that came up for me when going through the chapter was, we call out walkers and bikers a lot, and I wonder if it would be better to just talk about, I don't know, non-vehicular travel or something like that, because there's, there's other ways to get around, of course. I mean, there's scooters and segways and I don't know. I mean, how much, if we want to use, I don't know if there's terminology, like I'm not an expert in this area. There's probably terminology that, that references non our travel, like there's probably some jargon, but I don't know. What are your thoughts about calling out walkers and bikers and Think it's fine. Yeah, I like I like using no. Yeah, I agree. Unless we're specifically not. Yeah, non motorized still like if you want like from a language perspective, it still centers cars though. So, um, but that might be the thing we do. I don't know if there is any like terminology from the planning world. I'm Googling now. I would really love if we didn't say efficiency twice in uh, line six there, because that feels very inefficient to me. I'm trying <laughs> to figure out how to reword that one. <laughs> like improve the flow of goods and people through Montpelier's transportation system. Improve the movement. Of or movement, yeah, something like that. The efficient movement, or if we need to include it in there once. I mean, you can also just improve Montpelier's transportation system through the efficient movement of goods and people and goods. Yeah. That works too. Yeah. 
It makes me that efficiency one makes me wonder what strategies we have that are tied to that. Oh, there's a yeah. lot that goes into the efficiency of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all the existing goals we have have lots of strategies to them. Okay, so uh, so we have. I'll just go ahead and do, make that change to the efficiency one. Is there, is everyone okay with the appearance one, or we want to go ahead and change walkers and bikers now? I guess, did you find another term, Marcel? I missed, I spaced out for a second. No, I haven't. Yeah, I mean, non-vehicular sounds okay to yeah, me. Yeah, non-vehicular traffic or... Yeah. I so I just changed it to, especially from the perspective of non-vehicular travel. Or we, I can even take out the especially and just say, improve the appearance of Montpelier's transportation infrastructure and amenities from the perspective of non-vehicular travel. Thoughts? Travelers, I would probably say. The perspective yeah. is of the travelers. travelers. Yeah, that's good. Can we just say for instead of from the perspective of? Okay. So unless we have anything more, I'll go on to this next one, which is the one that I just cobbled together. Improve accessibility to downtown and within neighborhoods through all modes of transportation. Um, that could be another one where we just say for all users, improve accessibility to downtown and within neighborhoods for all users. I don't know, maybe not. Then we need the context of, it's a goal in the transportation section. So maybe that's not a good. Suggestion. Yeah, I like modes of transportation because I think it's more specific. I think users could be more ambiguous. Improve accessibility to downtown. So was this meant to to address the the quote needs of all users? what this is kind of meant to get at? Yeah, um, I, I, I think it was in housing, you know, relating to, you know, letting people, making sure that all of our neighborhoods and access to the downtown are accessible through various means other than just cars. So I, I think that, the, you know, we would have to pull the strategies from the housing chapter and what was there for the strategies. That answer your question, Mike? Yeah, and I think if you were to look in those, it was most of those were probably talking about supports the transportation plans strategy or goal to make complete streets was probably what it was just getting at. And usually a lot of those we we tried to address through the in other chapters, we've addressed it in the chapter section. So when we've had these ones, which talked a lot about, um, you know, a lot of references, this plan uh, supports the goals or strategies of another plan. We kind of pulled most of those out and put them into the written chapter in that section that talks about how this chapter relates to other chapters. So that was a lot of times how we would kind of get at that piece. I think, I think for this stuff, I think it's important for the plan to expressly uh, encourage 
really doing more. I mean, we have the complete streets studies, but on the ground, we don't have great bike lanes in most places. There's still a lot of areas without sidewalk. There's some like fringe neighborhoods that don't have good sidewalks. There's, we don't, you know, we, you know, you know, I could go on. So just to, to make sure that we actually have those parts in there and, and um, that we're follow, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's good enough to say we should follow the complete streets if that's what, if that's what those plans are saying. What do you think? Well, I know what the, the, the way the plans are laid out or way it was kind of laid out in here is that it's going to talk about an initiative. Um, so you've got the plan to have the complete streets. We kind of know what our street typologies are, what, where we want to get to. The issue is how long is it going to take us to build out that, uh, build out that plan? And what we're doing now is step-by-step step putting it into the capital improvement plan, putting money in the budget, um, and then addressing these one at a time. Before we didn't have an overall transportation plan, we just kind of ad hoc would decide which streets would have sidewalks and which streets wouldn't. So we have a system of, you know, sidewalks to nowhere in some cases, um, gaps in sidewalks. And what we have now is at least a plan that says this is how the whole system should connect and work. If you want to walk from Town Hill to downtown, this is how you would make a, you know, be able to safely make that trip. And if you wanted to bike from Town Hill down, this is the safe route that you'd be able to, you know, from bike lanes or taking a lane or whatever the rule is, you have a system that would let you get there. Now, that's not to say it's there and it exists on the ground. We just have a plan that says this is how we would be able to do it. Now we just have to go through over the next, you know, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. It depends how much money we put towards it. depends on how quickly we get ourselves to, um, to get these all constructed. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to look at the strategies to see if it you know it makes all that stuff express well enough or not. And think about it. Um, okay, well, we could, uh, does anyone else have any more about that goal or is it fine? I'm the fine. Accessibility. Yep. Um, okay, so the next, the next one we have is improve the transportation infrastructure to better treat stormwater generated, decrease greenhouse gas emissions, mitigate heat island effects, and increase opportunities for informal public spaces. Uh, Can I ask question. the... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Ahead. Clarifying question on this. I'm just want to make sure I understand. So this is specifically transportation related stormwater. So there would be other places where like other places in the plan where we could talk about like other types of stormwater, which is probably a pretty a smaller section of the stormwater universe, right? Like housing, housing specific. So I just wanted to make sure it makes sense to call out transportation infrastructure related stormwater. Does that make sense? Like categorizing it like that? Yes, that's what this is kind of looking at. Um, our transportation system has two big, well, three big things that it does that create negative impacts. One is it generates a lot of stormwater, whether it's the public roads and the public parking lots, but also the private parking lots. Um, so transportation overall creates a lot of stormwater. Um, not all of it, there's obviously rooftops and other things, but um, it does generate a lot of it. So we, mm -hmm. we're planning for our transportation infrastructure. We can do, a, we should do a better job of treating the stormwater. Um, and then obviously um, there, there's the green greenhouse gas, gas emissions, and then there's the heat island of all that asphalt. So right. there are really three big negatives that we need to do our best to try to mitigate.
And I think in my suggestions, I had said to take out the informal public spaces because we could talk about that under land use, but we could also keep it here if we wanted to. Um, really, that is a looking at um, what in planning we kind of call these third places. Um, uh, it, it's it's how people, um, you know, nowadays, especially with more and more stuff that's by e-commerce and working remotely and everything else, there's less places and opportunities where people um, just kind of meet, kind of meet your neighbors and bump into them on the street and have casual, um, you know, kind of unplanned conversations. And so these having sidewalks and pocket parks and other places um, become important for, you know, these kind of um, informal conversations that might come up. So that's, that's what it is to try to make sure that we have our, our roads and, and sidewalks are not just about getting people from point A to point B, but also giving opportunities where people would stop and stand and talk and meet. And uh, that's what it's talking about. And whether that's here in the transportation plan or whether that's discussed in um, the land use plan, um, it, it really depends how we want to organize it. Yeah, that was the piece that was throwing me off with this one because it feels like it doesn't fit with the other ones, because it's kind of a, to me, it's a separate thing. We're talking about the sustainability um, more broadly here and environmental responsiveness. And that one, I, I'm confused as to that being in here, whether it's its own goal here that has its other, or its own strategies and ideas behind it or whether it goes in land use. Um, I don't know, but it feels like it doesn't quite fit with this one. Okay, are we thinking we wanna move it to a different goal within this chapter or to move it to the land use chapter? I feel like I need to better understand, this is on me, what goes in the land use chapter to answer that well. But, Yeah, I kind of see the connection to transportation. Um, or is it is it uh, making sure that transportation like includes or is it an accessibility question? So not just trans the transportation systems don't just make like neighborhoods in downtown more accessible, but also parks and pocket parks. And is that, and then we talk about that in the land use or the rec chapter. Yeah, I mean, some of the, like one of the strategies is, is why, you know, why do we have the parklet ordinance? Um, you know, that can be economic development, but it's also a little bit of this, um, you know, activating your streets and, and making streets lively um, you know, certainly that was a conversation that that comes up as, as having these vibrant, lively streets. Um, and so that's that's a little bit of where this was coming from. Your streets are, are, are a resource. Um, you know, they're publicly owned and they're an asset that we can develop in in a number of ways. And I think that's what this was trying to to look at is how how else we can use transportation our transportation resources beyond just for transportation and maybe by saying it that way maybe that kind of leads to go and say maybe it should be in in land use but it's use you're using the transportation infrastructure to do more than just transportation I, I feel like I feel like yeah. informal public spaces is a bit broader than just the roads and sidewalks so I, I think I, that's I important yeah, just, What was that? Um, so is everybody okay well, with just- I guess the way that Mike just explained it, I felt like that was worth calling out in the transportation, call, calling out somehow. Um, would you be okay with uh, having it as a goal within the land use though, and then referring to the transportation side of it as well as other public spaces.
don't know. What, what are other people's thoughts about, about the informal public spaces? I think it makes more sense in another chapter, or <laughs> chapter that may be, but yeah, to me, it's more about social infrastructure almost. Anybody else? I think we could maybe get at it by adding to the accessibility, improve accessibility to downtown and within neighborhoods and natural areas, if we're talking mostly about parks. And then you could get rid of it in that. I mean, I know what else, what else are informal public spaces besides parks and transportation infrastructure? Well, we really wouldn't want to be talking about the parks part here, which is why it might make sense to put it in transportation. You mean land or, use? Or to put it in land use, excuse okay. me. I mean, the goal that existed before said improve the city's transportation infrastructure to increase opportunities for successful third spaces, especially in the downtown core. Um, I'm, I'm good with putting it in land use. I mean, there's, and there's, there's reference, when we get to the chapter about this, there's references to the connection between transportation and land use. And so we can keep that in mind when we get to that paragraph. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so uh, I did move it, Mike. I'll um, put it somewhere else. Uh, okay, so is everyone good with where were we? Uh, improve the transportation infrastructure to mitigate stormwater emissions and heat island effects caused by roads and sidewalks. I rephrase that. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah, sounds fine to me. Okay. And so that's that's what we that's what we have for the goals there. So we have these 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 alternatives down below. I think those are ones that had been removed or combined. Um, so let's look through these and see if the make sure something's not left out. Make sure that any strategies that would fall under these are still strategies we could put under the other goals. So I just renumbered the goals, by the way. So now we have one through six. Um, I'm not seeing any that where where we're, where we're leaving anything out. 
Well, when I combine the strategies, I'll point out or I'll highlight on the side if there's any of them that that don't fit into this new set of boxes and we can decide whether or not we want to add another goal in order to keep that strategy because obviously you don't have you don't do something unless it's helping us accomplish a goal so um, if we've got a strategy that doesn't fit somewhere then i'll just highlight it and put it off to the side and we can have a conversation about whether or not we need to make a change to accommodate it or if we just go and let it go Okay, <clears throat> that sounds good. Uh, so it looks like we've made some progress here. Do we want to go over to the chapter now? Um, or yeah, I think maybe it makes sense to go to the chapter and look at it and hopefully we'll still have time to, to vote these out so that Mike will have something to work with. Should we just vote on them now since we just looked at them or? Yeah, it's sometimes it's like there's pros and cons to each one. Like if people are comfortable, we can vote it out now. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, we oh. just did the same thing in the natural resources and we just said we weren't going to uh, because we didn't have the strategies done. We'll vote it all in when we finish the strategies. I thought the difference though is that we, we haven't like formally looked at natural resources chapter yet, but this is us oh. formally looking at transportation. Okay. I'm, I'm happy having it voted out too. Does anyone, does anyone want to wait to vote it out? Okay. Do we have a motion to vote out the aspiration and goals as they are now? Yeah, I'll move voting the aspirations and goals for that transportation plan to the next step. Okay, so to, to clarify, it is uh, uh, having one aspiration, which is currently aspiration B, and the six goals. Is that right? Okay, and aspiration B has been rewritten in the doc, right? Yeah, aspiration B is, has been rewritten to encompass all three of the previous aspirations. Uh, I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion from Ariana and a second from Marcella. Those in favor of passing these aspirations and goals for the transportation chapter, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so then Mike has something to proceed with there. Uh, that's why we do that. Uh, okay, let's take a look at the chapter then. Um, and I'll let you share screen for that one because you did most of the work on it. Okay, well, I don't know about that, but I definitely scribbled on it a lot. Um. Okay, can everyone see it? Okay. Yes. Yeah, if you can uh, go to 125 or something, just go up to the percent, we'll make it a little bigger. Okay. And yeah, other people can just pull it up and read for yourselves or, or go off this screen. Uh, so I'll just I'll just read it uh, based on the changes. You can see, uh, just just generally to let you know what I was doing when I went through this. Uh, it was I was I was trying to make it. Uh, as succinct as possible, but keep most of the same points and, and ideas that, that uh, Mike had, had included in his first draft. Uh, some of them are shortened a lot and some of the some of the paragraphs are about the same size probably and just has some wordsmithing. So here goes. Introduction. Transportation is a critical part of everyday life. 
It includes driving, finding parking, shipping goods, delivering packages, and travel to recreation and work. If anyone can chime in if they have suggestions as we go. The decisions we make as a city can favor the old technologies that contribute to climate change or can favor other modes like walking and biking that move the city towards sustainability while improving our overall health and quality of life. For more than a century, the use of cars as the primary mode of transportation in the United States largely controlled how people lived and how cities were designed and planned. Today, the transportation field is changing fast with a new emphasis on ensuring that streets work just as well for walking, biking, and other alternatives as they do for cars. Looking forward, we know that we need a system that accounts for new technologies like e-bikes, e-scooters, microtransit, rideshare, and ride hailing. These new technologies and services may hold some of the keys that could help us make the societal shift to a non-fossil fuel, fuel future for transportation in more equitable urban and suburban communities. Montpelier strives to be a welcoming, inclusive, welcoming and inclusive community. To better achieve that goal, our community must allow people uh, to work, attend school, shop, and recreate without regard for the ability and means to drive. Whether someone is living without a car for economic, environmental, philosophical, or other reasons, Montpelier should have a full range of options that make life possible without a car. We hope that Montpelier becomes a city where people can live and work without needing to own a car. So I think you know that the chapter is pretty clear, even though we took that one aspiration out. That you know, a big priority here is is no car or having the option of no car. This next paragraph I cut down quite a bit. Uh, I left a couple of the points out, but these this, these were just. Uh, anyways, you'll see. The, the new version just says, although we strive for Montpelier to be a place where car ownership is optional, we also recognize that automobiles and associated infrastructure will continue to be a central part of life for the foreseeable future. To balance both of these, those realities, this chapter tries to establish a transportation system that treats all modes of transportation equally and where safety for all travelers is a top priority. The diversity of users can make planning and managing transportation infrastructure and services a challenge. We need to ensure that roads are efficient to allow good movement of drivers, but slow enough to maintain safety for bikers and walkers. We need room for delivery vehicles, emergency vehicles, on-street parking, and bike lanes. We also need space for bike parking, drop-off locations for rideshare and microtransit, and space for parklets and outdoor seating. The challenge for the Department of Public Works is to provide all of this infrastructure maintain it and do it cost effectively. This is why Montpelier uses a complete streets approach that accounts for all users. The city then uses a capital uh, improvement plan to schedule repairs and reconstruction, which includes everything from sidewalks and retaining walls to bridges and street paving. After many decades of underfunding, uh, capital imp uh, after many decades of underfunding capital improvements, the city now has a fully funded paving and street reconstruction program. This means many of the projects in the CIP are now catching up on some long overdue needs while sustainably maintaining our streets and sidewalks. Anybody have anything so far? Okay. The city has completed two, this is, this is one where this is covered down below, just, and so keep that in mind if we, may want to end up cutting this paragraph actually. This, the city has completed two signature projects in recent years, the Montpelier Transit Center at 61 Taylor Street and the, I did not know this thing had a name, Cy Boynebi? Is it Cy Boynebi? It's uh, Cibo Nuebi, I believe is, or it's, it's, it's uh, the Native American word for, I think it was River Walk or something like that. So, oh, and yeah, there was a competition cool. to name the the bike path. Oh, the winning one. Cool. That we should put up some signs because I had no idea that had a name. Uh, so, okay, the 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 shared use path connecting Granite Street to Gallison Hill Road. Those signs should also have the way to pronounce it. The phonetic. Yes. Uh, so anyway, uh, 
The Department of Public Works continues to work on other important projects, including the Barry and Main intersection, East State Street reconstruction, and implementing pieces of the downtown master plan. In the future, our transportation system must do better to address problems caused by stormwater as well as trans, trans as well as transition to electric vehicles to address global climate change. We must do this while continuing to design our downtown streets and sidewalks in a way that fosters the social and civic interactions that make Montpelier a vibrant and interesting place to be. How does the transportation plan relate to other chapters? This chapter and the energy chapter are mutually dependent on one another. For example, the transportation sector contributes 40% of all carbon emissions. Uh, this chapter includes support for public transit, ride sharing options, and electric vehicle charging stations that are essential to meeting the aspiration and goals. Aspirations, well, is there multiple aspirations in the energy chapter now? I can go and check no. on that. No, it was, we, we combined the 2030 and 2050 into one, so essential to meeting the aspiration and goals of the energy chapter. Encouraging active mobility, such as walking and biking, requires a transportation system that has complete streets, which make alternative modes of transport, alternative modes of transport as desirable as using an automobile. Okay. Land use and transportation are also closely connected. Land uses generate car, bike, and foot traffic. Uh, Transportation impact studies are required for larger projects and transportation infrastructure is critical to a safe, vibrant and walkable downtown. The land use chapter favors mixed use developments that create fewer trips. We'll have to keep this in mind to make sure that we actually include this stuff. Uh, mixed use developments that create fewer trips as opposed to single use zoning districts that necessitate a vehicle to travel between home, work and shopping, all while requiring additional space to park in each location. So that's all we have there. Do, do we want to throw in a sentence about informal public spaces? We anticipate putting that in land use. I think I'd be think better. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Go. No, you go. <laughs> I was just going to say, I think I'd be better prepared to do that once I see how it goes in the land use. But if you've got an idea for this one, I mean, I, I would, uh... Yeah, I think it's it's still good to point out here that we're hoping within our transportation infrastructure that there are those opportunities. I think it's still worth bringing that up in this section. my first shot at it. Transportation infrastructure can be used to create informal public spaces, which is a priority of the land use chapter. It's a good space holder, placeholder for going back to it if we need to. Okay, anybody have an idea to improve it or should we move on? I think Jane got that one. Okay, I'll keep going. Transportation is also closely tied to economic development. Um, I highlighted this next part because a lot of the examples used below were like traditional thoughts about economic development, like industry stuff. And uh, I just wanted uh, more of a tone to come through that we also recognize that people and um, human capital are a big part of economic development. So I threw something in that kind of played into that. So it says transportation is also closely tied to economic development. Much of this chapter helps ensure that Montpelier stays economically strong through being a highly desirable place to live, work and create. Offering attractive streets and cityscape while providing numerous alternatives for personal transportation will make sure Montpelier maintains its ability to attract talent and prosperity. Further, nearly all traditional industrial developments use trucks to deliver materials and to ship final products while commercial buildings receive deliveries and need parking or similar accommodations for patrons. Our rail lines carry large freight through the city, which is connected to our regional economies. Uh, 
ensuring that our transportation system supports the various commercial and industrial land uses in the city as part of future growth. Our on-road and off-road bicycle network will draw visitors through transportation amenities. That's a bit of a non sequitur, but um, I don't know. How does everybody think about how that flows? Um, I almost feel like, can we just shorten it up even more and say transportation is closely tied to economic development and we want to make sure that our transportation system supports our economic development goals. I mean, I, I, I guess I just don't find that. Um, I mean, maybe it's, it's helpful to think about the ways in which transportation supports businesses, et cetera. But I, I guess I just don't find, if I get a little, I get a little lost in it myself in that uh, paragraph. It, I mean, it does cover a lot of ground, but um, do we have other? Thoughts on this one? Um, okay, so let's see if we can shorten would, it even more. I mean, I would say I like I like how you set it up because I think sometimes it's people miss, and we get uh, we get this a lot when we have conversations about you know. Um, you know, parking in the downtown, you know, and maybe we don't need as much parking and, you know, it, it starts coming back to that, that strong connection that exists between, you know, you know, parking and economics um, and economic development. Um, and I think sometimes just making sure that it's, it's clear to understand that this transportation plan does tie to economic development because, you know, a lack of parking or a lack of, you um, good accessibility, um, you know, or as you said, the streetscapes, you know, I think that was an interesting and a, and a good addition to kind of put in there that these are the types of things that make a difference to attracting talent. Um, or, or conversely, how do, um, you know, I know when we were talking above about um, the importance of um, making sure that this is, you know, Montpelier is a city for everybody. Well, you know, um, if you don't have a car, how do you get to work? So, you know, transportation is tied to economic development in a lot in a lot of different ways. And I think you've captured a bunch of it in here. Um, that just helps to remind people that that we can't talk about this chapter without talking about another chapter. Um, and that's really the point of this section. I, I'm I'm looking at ways to shorten it. But to keep some of the to point out to still point out some of the connections, um, the bicycle network thing, to me, it does um, it fits in awkwardly. Like I'd be fine cutting that sentence, and I and I'm fine either way with the rail lines. I mean, it's important to point out rail lines as part of everything, but. Um, it's not as significant overall as compared with some of the other aspects of the chapter. Um, what do you think about that, Ariane? Um, yeah, that sounds good. Um, and if I may offer one more edit, um, I think that sounds great, just taking out those and shortening it a little bit. I actually agree with Mike. I think thinking about deliveries and trucks is probably important to highlight. Um, I also am just thinking about that sentence, offering attractive streets and cityscapes while providing numerous alternatives for personal transportation. Um, could we say something more like we'll ensure Montpelier is an attractive place to live or 
I don't know. I, there's something about attracting talent and prosperity that I find a little like, um, like yeah, what, about this- people, what about people like service workers? You know, I want to attract those people too. And I just don't want to, I, I just want to be thinking about the language. What about human capital? Or is that not good enough either? Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, I don't know that people know what human capital is, but I think that's fine. I, I did think that it sounded a little snobby and I, and, and I got a little, I got a little poetic when I threw prosperity in there, but, uh, um, we'll make sure Montpelier maintains its ability to attract human capital. I'm still open to like changing that further. If, if you guys want to, um, I'm not in suggestions mode anymore here. Uh, so the rail line sentence, delete, yes or no? I would delete it personally, but. Okay. Before I press the button, does anyone object? One, two, three. Okay. So now it says, transportation is also closely tied to economic development. Much of this chapter helps ensure that Montpelier stays economically strong through being a highly desirable place to live, work, and create. Offering attractive streets and cityscape while providing numerous alternatives for personal transportation will make sure Montpelier maintains its ability to attract human capital. Further, nearly all traditional industrial developments use trucks to deliver materials and to ship final products while commercial buildings receive deliveries and need parking or similar accommodations for patrons. Ensuring that our transportation systems, ensuring that our transportation system supports the various commercial industrial land uses in the city is part of future growth. I cut out the last sentence because it, it made just a couple of add-on points and I just thought it was like a good thing to be able to just reduce size. So it, we don't mention stormwater there and we don't mention inclusivity, but inclusivity is addressed above. Um, so I did not change the summary of past efforts because that's, there's still stuff to be added in there. This is like similar to the other chapters where we've left that alone to be more fleshed out later by staff. Uh, same thing with the maps. And then for the aspirations, I had, I had changed this one aspiration because it had been uh, modified before, but um, I'm going to stop sharing and then change that up. Uh, to, to, to meet the thing that we just agreed on. Yeah, the aspirations and goals will, that's why I put in there complete after aspirations and goals are approved because I really couldn't write this out until we got done wordsmithing. And it was a good thing I didn't spend a lot of time writing it because it got changed significantly. So now- Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'll go ahead and I'll make that change now. Um, yeah, so I'll try to draft something quickly and then you can, go through and start to edit it unless you want to write something up from scratch yourself. And I just, I just changed the, I deleted those other aspirations and changed it to the one that we just agreed on. Um, and at the same time, it told me that there was misspellings. Yeah, it's possible because Excel doesn't have any spell check. So as soon as you bring it to yeah, the format, it'll go through. And... Okay, so well, I corrected those in the spreadsheet. Okay, do we have any more thoughts about the chapter? So obviously those last few sections have to be flushed out. Do we want to vote on it? (laughs) 
I feel like well, it's in kind of the similar spot to the one, the energy chapter, right? I'd be a, if we, you know, a little bit more probably to do, but fine to keep moving. So I'd be okay voting it out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's just, I think just the nature of how the like workflow is happening where we need to do some things to free up Mike to do some more things. Yeah. It was a little bit of back and forth on these guys because uh, we're writing an introduction to the aspirations and goals. So we have to approve the aspirations and goals. And so it kind of has a little bit of back and forth there. Oh, maybe that, we guess we didn't, we waited until that part was done for energy, didn't we? Yeah, I think we had that. Oh, we maybe did. we should just wait then. Yeah, I don't know if we approved it in two parts. I don't know. We have the minutes that we've been approved. I mean, been I'm, I'm fine waiting because I, it's not final yet. And it's hard to, it's still hard to look at it with all those track changes um, until we're looking at a clean version. Sure. We can, we can, I don't, I don't think it's that big of a deal, is it, Mike, for you to like, Think you have the gist of it so we can we can wait on that that's fine with me because we'll, we'll we'll be revisiting transportation to go over strategies in the near future i take it yeah i will be putting together the strategies come you know kind of compressing those down into different initiatives like we've been doing for the other chapters um and then we'll approve the strategies and then approve the text here. So it should go fairly quick, I would think. It's not as much to approve. Okay, so we can take a look at strategies and then we'll take a look at the um, more polished up version of the chapter at that same time. And then at the next meeting, or do you, do you think we're going to do do that, Mike, or do you think we'll do housing? Well, we could keep working on the natural resources if we wanted to. I mean, I, I've got housing, I've got natural resources. It's up to you guys what you want to jump into next. Was was the working group planning on doing something more, or you guys are good now? Do you mean for natural resources? Yeah. No, we haven't looked at a chapter yet, but the we felt good about the aspirations and goals. So I don't think there's anything on our plate right now until Mike condenses the strategies and we have a chapter to look at. Yeah, Mike said he did have a chapter. So we were just saying we, we could go through and edit a chapter, but I don't know that we would meet to do that. I would probably do it kind of individually between now and the next meeting. Yeah, that seems reasonable. <laughs> me okay uh okay mike so we i guess we, we don't have to we don't have to nail it down now so it looks, sounds like we have some options if we end up doing natural resources we'll let uh you guys know and i'll i'll keep in my mind that you'll edit the chapter uh, one of you will and if it ends up being housing then i'm fine with editing the chapter does that sound good Okay. Well, sure. do we have anything else we want to do right now? It'd be a shame if we got to go back to our normal lives like 15 minutes early. You seen any more bears, Ariane? That's what I, that's the last thing I want to do. <laughs> Find out if any more bears have been on College Street. I haven't seen that bear on College Street since what was that? Two or three weeks ago. My neighbor saw a moose walk through our drive our shared driveway oh, yes. a week ago did you see a moose up by you too my neighbor sent us a picture of a moose on Loomis street i think like a small yeah. moose yeah <laughs> and i'm i'm on charles street which is really steep it had nowhere to go i don't know if it came from sabin but it like went across our street and then there's a cliff on the other side so i have no idea where it went but anyway very unrelated but that was my last note <laughs>
Well, that's natural resources, right? We're re yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to figure out moose passage through Montpelier. Yeah. <laughs> wow. This, I think Hubbard's had a moose or an, a bear this summer. It tends to have a bear. Do you think it's the same one or is it a different one than you saw? Oh, there was definitely a bear last summer who was or in the same vicinity, like crossing Main Street and all that stuff. No. I have a neighborhood raccoon that's kind of like a stray cat. Like it'll walk within five feet of me. It's a little unnerving. We just have a bunch of stray cats. That, well, they're not stray cats. A bunch of people's house cats that do that. Like jump on my porch. I'm like, no, that's not, you don't belong on my porch. <laughs> not my cat. <laughs> uh, okay, would well, you guys want to adjourn? Do we motion to adjourn? No yes. moved. <laughs> okay, motion by Stephanie, second by Ariane. Sure, yep. Okay, those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. In two weeks. Have a good night. Bye.